Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I wanted to talk about some misconceptions regarding crested gecko care. You see, when I did my videos on why you shouldn't get a leopard gecko and then why you should, a lot of people asked me to do one on crested geckos and quite a few people mentioned some aspects of their care that make them a great pet such as not having to feed them insects and not having to buy things like heating equipment for them. However, this put me in a bit of a tricky situation. You see, if I was going to sell you a crested gecko, I could totally tell you these things because it makes it sound like a crested gecko is like the simplest reptile to look after. But some of this information, it's a little outdated, it's a little basic, <laughs> and in some cases these practices can be detrimental to the gecko's health. So the first misconception, as I just mentioned, is that crested geckos don't need heating equipment. Now we've all probably heard that crested geckos can live at room temperature. But as I've mentioned in the past, room temperature can really vary a lot from like person to person, country to country. Anywhere between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit is usually accepted as a good temperature for crested geckos. However, I do find that the perfect temperature is around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is hard to control that temperature without heating equipment. Now, this varies depending on where you live. Some people live in places that are lovely and warm all year round. I'm very jealous because there are some places, like here in England, like parts of America and Canada, that get very cold in autumn and winter. And in my experience, my room can get a little bit chilly if we don't have the central heating on. So back in March 2018, I added a deep heat projector into Lyra's tank. I set it up using a thermostat and set it at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this doesn't heat the entire tank, it actually heats one area and as you move away it gets cooler. And this is definitely important because you really need a temperature gradient. The gecko needs to be able to move away from it if it likes and cool down. I found that the heater is most beneficial in autumn and winter and those particularly cold nights so I do keep it on all of the time but as I said it's controlled by a thermostat. Now since she's in a deep heat projector with Lyra she is full of energy all year round, she never goes off of her food and she's always at a consistent weight. Now I have many people message me and ask why their crested gecko is kind of lethargic, it's not moving around its tank very much, it doesn't seem to be eating its food and in pretty much all cases a heater isn't provided. Now, as I said, this isn't a piece of equipment that is often recommended for crested geckos. And yes, setting up a heater, getting the fitting for it, buying a thermostat, that can get very pricey when basically you're raising the temperature by a few degrees. But I'm telling you, when it comes to autumn and winter time, it's a massive help. And you can use a heat mount on the side if you wish, you can use a ceramic heat emitter above. But of course, I would recommend the deep heat projector just because unlike the other two, it fully energises a gecko like the sun would in the wild. Now regardless of what heating equipment you do choose to use, just make sure you're using the appropriate thermostat with it and make sure it doesn't emit any visible light as at night time it does get cooler. So we do want this heat on sort of 24 hours and so we don't want to disrupt that gecko's day night cycle with light i know some people think the deep heat projector produces light it doesn't normally when i'm showing you the projector i also have a light on in the tank but they're two separate things anyway i feel like it's a great time to try this out if you wish so if you have noticed that your crested gecko is starting to slow down it's not really eating much try this and see how it goes it is sometimes worrying to me that some people get crested gecko based on the fact they've been told that the gecko doesn't need a heater and it doesn't need lighting and whenever i recommend a light or a heater these people get very annoyed because they feel it's unnecessary and they've gone into getting this gecko thinking i don't need to buy anything and i'm not going to buy anything because my gecko is still alive it's still functioning but there is one thing of an animal surviving living plodding along in life and there's another seeing the animal actually thrive and that's what I try to aim for and I don't benefit in any way promoting a heater to you if you want a heat mat surround heat emitter deep heat projector there's no affiliate codes for reptile people here we're not like the makeup people I don't get anything from this what I observe with my geckos and I see like turning my geckos lives into really thriving I want to pass that on to you guys I want to see your geckos do really well too and that's why I do what I do
Now, the next misconception is that crested geckos don't need to eat live feeder insects. Now, I did do an entire video on this, so I'll link that below and try not to go into too much detail here. If you want to know more, definitely check out that video. However, I do see a massive benefit in offering live feeder insects to your geckos, particularly young growing geckos. I think it can have a massive positive impact on them. I find um, they do prefer to eat insects more when they're little. I feel like when they get to a certain weight, certain age, they do slow down a bit. And I know that some diets you can get out there, I use them myself, they come with insects in them, but I don't think they can adequately replace the mental stimulation your gecko gets from hunting down its prey, and also the added nutrition of gut loading and dusting the feeder insects. Now, I totally see it's easier from coming from me saying, oh, you should get insects for your gecko, because I have leopard geckos, I have insects around just to feed the geckos, so popping in a few for a crested gecko is not a problem for me, whereas if you have one crested gecko, going out and buying all these insects when a crested gecko is probably offered insects once a week. It might not eat all of them. Like, I get it. That That's annoying. And, you know, maybe in a case like that, I can understand you not wanting to go and get those insects. Maybe if, if you have a friend who has reptiles, you can maybe get a few of them. I don't know. But I feel that if you already have small enough feeder insects that you offer your other reptiles, you should totally offer some to your crested gecko. Recently, Lyra has been really into her insects again. Sadly, she only mainly eats when it's very dark, and that's something you might notice. You might think, oh, my crested gecko doesn't eat insects. Try it when your room's really dark. They completely change. Um, but unfortunately, it's near impossible for me to film her eating, but she does go for her insects now, and if you did want to offer insects, you can pop a few in their tank, you can feed your geckos in a separate tub, or you can tongue feed them. Just remember to remove any uneaten insects, and as I said, the darker it is, the crazier they go for food. Those two last misconceptions were quite long, these next two are a lot shorter, so the next one is that a crested gecko won't drink out of a water bowl. When in fact, actually they will. You give them a little bit of water in one of those little feeder dishes, they totally will. And, you know, I don't think they need a big deep bowl at the bottom of their tank where they could accidentally fall in it. You know, they're not built for swimming. And I don't think they need a big bowl that I might, I don't know, use for a leopard gecko. But I do think if you offer them a little food dish of water now and again, it can really help. There's a lot of arboreal, high humidity reptiles that probably go along being a little bit dehydrated. And it's only when you offer them this water, you're like, oh wow, you really can drink a lot. So if you wanted to add this in, you totally can. For some reason, people say not to, but they definitely will drink it. Just make sure you change it each day because there's a chance they're gonna walk for it or poop in it, so. And the final misconception, and this is one I saw a lot when I was first researching crested geckos many, many years ago, and it's a common thing that comes up with a range of reptiles, and that's you shouldn't use loose substrate because it will cause impaction. Now, there's some truth in this, like for leopard geckos, for example, if you use calci sand, calci sand is evil. Uh, why is it still available? I don't know. Um, and that will cause impaction, but that doesn't mean that all loose substrates are bad. Now, I started off with paper towel in my first gecko's tank, Isla. And I soon realized that the humidity sucked, it kind of smelled like damp, and it didn't look natural. And a lot of people said to me, why don't you use Eco Earth, stuff like that. So I use Eco Earth and Moss, and now I use Earth Mix. And uh, Earth Mix is great for a bioactive tank. It makes the humidity great, it's 100% safe, it looks natural, and honestly, like, Lyra doesn't spend a lot of time on the floor, and this is where I think this notion of loose substrate cause and impaction comes from, because in the past, crested geckos haven't been kept that well. Some people would even offer them baby food, which is a massive, massive no-no. If you ever see someone recommending baby food for a crested gecko, question their knowledge on this animal, because baby food is terrible. Anyway, they hadn't been kept very well for a while, and so if you have the temperature wrong, you have the humidity wrong, poor diet, poor substrate choices, improper care and husbandry, then yes, <laughs> these factors will contribute to impaction. If your gecko is spending a lot of time on the floor amongst the substrate, there's probably a problem with temperature or humidity, so maybe try to alter that. 
that may also be a result of just not having enough places to climb, not having enough places to rest high up or hide in. So all of these things can affect each other. Poor temperature in particular really raises a risk of impaction in general. So really look into this. If your gecko is spending a lot of time on the floor, that is bad. But with the proper care, the proper substrate, loose substrate can be fine and it won't cause impaction. So they were my four misconceptions. I know not everyone wants to hear them. Some people will keep their crested geckos in a tub in the dark on paper towel, no lighting, no heating, nothing. But I like to strive to create nice bioactive natural settings for my geckos and you know what, I think it's just time to move with the times and try to allow your reptile to thrive rather than just merely survive. Anyway, <laughs> if you've made it this far, thank you, thank you very much. If you haven't already, please subscribe and if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Before I go, I'd like to quickly thank the following people for being patrons of this channel for two whole years now. So Tracy, Sarah, Jennifer, Taylor, Amanda and Squidney. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and goodbye.